Well, good morning. Welcome to Great Divide Calvary Chapel. So excited to be able to be here with you to worship outside. And it's such a moment that we have today to just be present before the Lord, to just come before him. I know a lot of us come before him and we're coming from different places in our relationship with the Lord and different places just in life. But we have this moment to be together. And we know the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. We know that he is here in our midst. And, and I don't know what that looks like for you this morning, but definitely know this, that God uh, has you here, not by chance, that he wants to touch your life in somehow, some way. So what better way to do that than to come before him and worship? So let's stand. And Psalm 147 says this. How good to sing praises to our God. How delightful and how fitting. The Lord is rebuilding Jerusalem and bringing back the exiles to Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the stars and calls them all by name. How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. The Lord supports the humble but he brings the wicked down to the dust. And Lord Jesus, we want to come before you right here and right now and sing praises to you. We know, Father, that there are even those here this morning that might just be having a hard go at things. We ask, Father, that you would comfort them and fill them and touch them, Father, in a way that only you can. May we leave change today because of you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and pour yourself out upon this place. It's in your name we pray, and everyone said, amen. Yo 
There's a QR code floating around here somewhere. If you, you hit that on your phone, our bulletin will pop up and you can scroll down to the bottom of the bulletin and all the words will be there if you'd like to follow along and worship the words. If not, that's okay too. You can just close your eyes and be in the presence of the Lord this morning and allow the words to these songs to just minister to your heart.
my old flames I lay down my old flames Carry any fire Today Let's make this our prayer this morning The Lord would do a new work in our hearts That we'd allow him to do so I lay down my old Lord, we need that new fire. We need, Lord Jesus, that new life in us, Lord. Father, we get, we could get so stale so quickly, Jesus, in our relationship with you. Bring new life in us, Lord God, and, and may we come to a place, Lord Jesus, where we would allow you to do so. Father, take away these old wineskins and replace them with, with a new wineskin so that we'd be able to receive what's new, that you want to do that new work in us and through us, Lord Jesus. And the only thing in the way of that is ourself. Show us what that looks like to just rid ourselves of those things that are blocking you, Lord God. Do a new work, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father.
crazy too. Yes, you are. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love the way that you love us through the creation, hearing birds singing and looking at these mountains and feeling the wind blowing and it's just so amazing. And knowing that you just created all this for us is crazy, God. It's a crazy kind of love. <laughs> and Father, we want to give back to you love as well. As, as we love you, teach us what it looks like to love others in the way that you have called us to. And Father, we thank you that we get to open your word right now, that we have your word that we get to open and allow you to speak to us even more so. And so we want to give you this time that's in front of us now. It's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Hey, say hello to someone this morning, particularly if somebody's wearing white sunglasses, say hello to them. Because... <laughs> Nice, you guys. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us here at Great Divide Calvary. If you guys are a visitor or you're on vacation, props to you for taking a Sunday out and hanging with us for on your vacation time. So we thank you guys for fellowshipping with us. Um, I want to draw your attention to our online bulletin, which you did get when you came in on that QR code. Um, it is our bulletin as well as our song lyrics while we do the outdoor services. But you can uh, hit that and go to the website, and it'll get you set up if you are interested in a weekly bulletin being delivered to you via email every Saturday. That just keeps you connected uh, to what's going on here at Great Divide Calvary. This week, I want to, um, actually, you know what, what I first want to say is the song that he's, that they sang, New Wine, um, I trade in my old flame for a new fire. I just want you guys to just take those words in because they're both still lit up. They're still on fire. None of them have died. And with that being said, I'm just going to go down to the bottom of our bulletin because we have a heart for Cerritos, Mexico. And so we have a couple missionaries here from just over the border um, here in Mexico. So please uh, welcome them if you have a chance to find out what they do. But we have this heart to, um, <laughs> they're back there with the cute babies. <laughs> um, but we have this heart for Cerritos, Mexico, that the Lord is just, kind of planted a new seed in in us uh, since last year. And so we had our first missions meeting last Tuesday, and we are in the stages of just praying. We are seeking the Lord. Um, we were reminded by another fellow that, uh, a friend of ours who was in the very beginning stages of Great Divide Calvary, uh, that we sat around a table in Blue River when we first started Great Divide Calvary, and um, we prayed for this church. And then again, we sat around a table at uh, in Blue River river to pray for something in Cerritos. So please partner with us in that. Prayers are so needed right now. What does that look like for us? We don't know. So that's the cool thing about following God. He shows us a little bit at a time. Um, with that being said, this week, Friday night, we are hosting a backyard movie night. If you have little ones, the little ones are welcome to come into the house and we're going to put a movie on for them, but we're setting up a whole backyard movie. Um, we've got the full snacks, popcorn, everything going on for you guys. That's going to be Friday night from 7 to 10 out in Blue River at our house. Let me know if I can get you directions. Um, we also have next Sunday is our family service. So what that means is we share communion together, and then afterwards we hang out and we share a meal together. We have decided to... Uh, stock up the little buffet inside uh, and do a taco bar. So we are in need. What I have signed up thus far is cornbread. So... That's not going to feed you all. <laughs> so if you're going to be here next week, I need you to sign up for something. Just email me, info at greatdividecalvary.org, and let me know if you can bring something to help with the taco bar for next Sunday. Um, today is our end of the month, and we have the pleasure to do a baptism um, out over at the Rock between Frisco and Copper Mountain off of Officers Gulch. And so um, we are excited to... Uh, uh, have Michelle with us up from the Denver area. And so if that's something you guys are interested in just coming out and we're going to do worship and support her and love on her because part of the ministry here at Great Divide Calvary is to not only second homeowners, but to visitors and also our locals. So we are excited, Michelle. Thank you for driving up. Um, so that's going to be after service, probably about 12, 12, 15 is when we'll get going, which is about when the rain will come, but you're going to get wet anyway, so it's good. <laughs> um, so join us. We have one more baptism left at the end of August. And then we have, um, I forgot last week, you guys, Young Life has put some flyers on the back. He, um, they are hosting a uh, golf tournament, I think in September. So um, take a look at that flyer. And if you need inf more information, their information is actually in the bulletin. You can click on the link there for a calendar, um, and it'll kind of tell you, it'll get you to their website. Um, we also have weekly gatherings, prayer meetings, Tuesday, Thursdays, guys are Wednesdays at 6 here at Little Red. They're doing a, a ride and read, meaning you're going to go for a small bike ride, and you're also going to uh, have a Bible study out there. Uh, marriage retreat, I still got a couple spots uh, for October. And then... Um, I'm going to have a couple friends come up. They've got a couple just quick announcements for you guys. I want you to know, too, that we have a nursery for new babies now. So anywhere from zero to one year, or one, I think it's two years is what we're doing. Uh, we have a room for you, and we are streaming the service in there so you don't miss it. And then we have an elementary room for the other kids. But always need help there. So if you're interested in loving on some little ones, let me know. I'll get you signed up. And then um, Jules, are you here? Where'd she go? 
Oh, there she is. Come on up, Jules and Sonia. Just a couple quick, old, quick little announcements from these guys, and then I'll hand it over to Jimmy. Come on over. And then Jules is right behind you. Okay. Hi, my name is Sonia Dalrymple, and um, my husband Don and I are hosting a soul care conference in September here in Breckenridge at um, the Breckenridge Christian Ministries um, building. It's a three-day conference, so it's a little bit of an investment of your time, but I want to encourage you to really consider it whether you live here or not. Rob Reamer, the author of this book, Soul Care, um, hosts conferences all around the country, so it's a gift that he um, said yes to come here when we invited him. It was an answer to prayer. But Don, my husband Don and I read this book about four or five years ago, and it really changed our lives. I feel like God uses the principles that Rob teaches here to help just free our hearts from um, whatever we're going through. For us, it was just a desperation in our marriage and business and, and life in general. We felt pretty stuck, and we'd been following the Lord for a long time, and um, God really used this to get us um, to deeper places, to healing, and to great freedom. So consider reading this book. Check out the info on the website for the conference, September 22nd to the 24th, and just ask God, should I come? <laughs> and if he says yes, please do. Um, in preparation for that, we're also hosting a small group to walk through it together every other week at our home. And so if that's something that interests you, look for me or ask Sabrina about it, and I can share more info about that as well. Thank you. There is more information about that conference, too, in the online bulletin. <laughs> okay, I'm not as good as it says Sonia, but <laughs> um, I, my name is Julie. I uh, work, f uh, well, I volunteer one day a week at the Women's Resource Center in Dillon. Um, and this last week, we had our first baby shower um, for a new baby that's coming in the next couple of weeks, and it's really exciting. I am. <laughs> um, our past director is retired and we miss her a lot. So <laughs> she's here visiting. Um, but what we realized the other night at the baby shower is that um, we want to act as a community and draw in as many people as possible to bring in resources like cribs and clothing and blankets uh, for all seasons. Um, this last mom, she really wanted uh, winter clothes, but seeing as her baby's born in August, it's hardly hard to find stuff like that. So if you have anything or know of anything or see anything in Craigslist or One Man's Junk or wherever you are and you happen to see something baby, think about those brave, beautiful moms that are uh, considering life and... Um, Let's make it easier for them. Let's show them that we are vested in theirs and their child's life for, for the womb to tomb is what I heard somebody say once. Um, let's do more than just get those babies born. Let's support those moms and the, and the dads. And uh, if you could just pray for us as, in general, that'd be great. Thanks. Thanks so much, Julie. All right. You guys have a blessed morning. Thank you again for being here. Oh, that's what you were trying to do. All right. As we pray for this morning's offering, um, let's lift up the Women's Resource Center right here and right now. Lord, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you, Father, for how you are using this ministry to, to single moms or sometimes a the situation goes much deeper than just that. And, and we know that they are such a light and do such an amazing work. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just continue, Lord God, to guide them and lead them as they encounter uh, many opportunities to minister. Uh, we just pray, Father, that, that your hand be upon them. And we thank you, Father, for this morning. And we thank you for the opportunities that you give Great Divide Calvary uh, to, to minister to different uh, things, uh, different ministries in this county, in this state, in, the, in our nation, and across the seas, Lord God. And so may the tithe and the offering that's represented here today go to that ministry. And um, we just want to be open to that, Lord Jesus. And may this tithe and offering be dedicated to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. And if you'd like to extend your worship in that way, you can 
do so. There's a pillar around here somewhere, or you can go online, or there's diff different ways to do that. So Mark chapter 14, if you open up your Bible, and we are picking up where we left off from last week, beginning at verse 1. I'll be reading this morning from the New Living Translation, so if you have your phone and you have the opportunities to go to translations, go to that one, and uh will be uh, synced up here. It was now two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed, or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. That sounds like a heavy metal band, the 80s. Essence of nard. Anyway, sorry. Just my brain kind of goes there sometimes. Work with me. She broke open the jar and, and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor, so they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, and you could help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. I was in 10th grade, sophomore in high school. I started going to this youth group because my parents went to the church. I wasn't a Christian then. I just went because... My parents told me I needed to go. I was only 15, about to turn 16. The youth pastor would always come up to me and say, Jimmy, come to youth group. It's Wednesday night. And I'd be all, yeah, 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 whatever. And I didn't want to go to youth group. Finally, the youth pastor came up and says, Jimmy, what do I have to do to get you to come to youth group? And okay, okay already. Pushy youth pastors are the best bringing kids to youth group. You got to do it sometimes. So I went to youth group and lo and behold, they were, um, there was probably about, I don't know, maybe 20 of us, 25 of us at the time. And we were going to go on a winter retreat to Lake Arrowhead. And so I didn't want to go, but my buddy in there, I had one friend, Rob Espinoza. He said like, Jimmy, you got to go. And I'm like, I don't want to go. And he goes, we get to miss school on Friday. You got to go. Okay, I'll go. And so uh, prior to that Friday, I got into a bit of a surfing accident. I was out surfing and um, paddling out and somebody fell off their longboard, longboard, big longboard, probably about nine feet long. And I'm, I'm just paddling out, talking to my friend, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I look in front of me and there's this board right in front of me. And so in order to have it not take my head off, I went down sideways, tried to duck dive sideways under it and did a pretty decent duck dive, but it hit me right in the knee. And it just wedged my knee where I couldn't straighten it out. It was just locked. There was something going on there. I forget what it actually was medically, but I had to be on crutches. And so I was pretty bummed at the time uh, to be able, I'm going to decline that airdrop. Um, I was pretty bummed at the time to, uh, because I was on crutches. I was such an active kid. And so the retreat was coming up and I decided not to go. And my friend said, you got to go. We get to miss school. And I'm all, I've already missed the whole week. And he's all, miss more. Okay, I'll go on this thing. Again, wasn't a Christian. So every night... I was kind of bummed because I wasn't able to do things that all the other kids were doing. But one thing I did like at night was singing and, and worshiping and singing these songs. There was something that was going on there. And I didn't know it at the time, but it was, it was worship to Jesus. And there was a good feeling there. There was something that was relieving me of the darkness that I had been involving myself in prior to this. And so I would be on crutches walking around. One night, um, the youth pastor stopped and he goes, Jimmy, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your knee. 
will you let me? Okay, go for it. You know, pray. So we pray for my knee, and I, um, I ended up going to bed that night on crutches. The next morning, I got up, and I went down to breakfast, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of breakfast, someone said, Jimmy, where are your crutches? I'm all, what? And I'm all, oh. Oh my goodness, because I had been hobbling around on these crutches for the whole time, so bummed, and I had gotten up that morning and just came downstairs like it was no big deal, not thinking about it, and all of a sudden I knew in that moment that the Lord healed me, and it brought me to Jesus because of that healing. I knew right then and there, it's like, whoa, whoa, this is, this is for real. The Lord loves me this much, and I, get, I knew I had to give my life to him. And as I did that, I began discovering worship and realizing that worship was a gift given to us that we can experience him in, that we could gain strength as we worship the Lord, that there could be momentum in our relationship with him as we learn to be worshipers of Jesus. And in this day and age, we've lost some of that. And there's many ways to worship the Lord for sure, but, but we've lost a little bit of the, the, the softness in worship, the gentle approach in worship. We see today a perfect description of what worship is all about. And I think it's so important for us because again, we could be reminded of what it truly is all about. Here we have, it was now two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread we find in verse one. The Passover was a time obviously where they remembered what God did. They remembered what, how God delivered them. They also remember that God raised up Moses during that time, a great deliverer to free Israel from Egypt. There was a big important moment that they had in their worship to the Lord. The Romans that day, as we know, were oppressing Jerusalem. They were always on guard every Passover because they thought that a riot would erupt. A month ahead of time, before Passover, people would be reminded of what the meaning was all about. They actually waited during this time as they celebrated what took place in the past. They awaited for the Messiah to come. In great anticipation, they would come and celebrate Passover. A month ahead of time, they would begin to learn about what Passover is actually about. It would be explained in the synagogues. It would be explained in the Jewish schools of the day so that everyone would be prepared. Kind of like how we've been talking about lately. As we looked at Mark chapter 13, that we ought to be prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. That we have the word of God that prepares us. We have the word of God that equips us so that we won't be surprised when that time comes. We notice here in chapter 14 in the very beginning, the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law, they were on prowl looking for an opportunity, scripture says, to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. This is a great insight into the corruption that was going on of the day with the religious leaders. They were secretly doing this to, to kill him, to capture him. They were obviously, because they were doing it in secret, not operating in God's will. If they were, it didn't need to be in secret. But they had witnessed the triumphal entry of Jesus coming into Jerusalem where there was a celebration where people were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save now. And they were a bit jealous of that because of what Jesus was bringing in something new. They knew that there was new life in Jesus, but they absolutely rejected it. And they feared the people's response instead of God Verse 2 says that they weren't going to capture him, not during Passover, or the people may riot. As they were moving in secret, looking for opportunity, looking for ways to capture Jesus. There's a news flash for us. Most of the time when we do things in secret, we are not honoring God and we're falling into sin. Most of the time. Now, sometimes you, you want to surprise your wife with something, so you operate in secret. 
or your brothers and sisters or your spouse. But most of the time when we have to do things in secret, it's not honoring God. We're allowing ourselves to maybe cut a corner and do something that would not be appropriate, do something that would not be honoring God. Do you have things that are done in secret? It's only a matter of time before it gets found out. Seriously. That's why the Lord says, deal with your stuff as it's called today so that that doesn't have to take place. Come before me. Don't operate in secret. Don't be hiding things from whoever is close to you, whether it is your husband or your wife or brothers or sisters or your workplace. You might do things in secret because it wouldn't be appropriate to be done or take away. We can't be people that will operate in secret. The Lord calls us and wants us to be better than that. We don't have to go that route. We can deal th with things, even though they might be tough at times, genuinely, openly. We might have to have some discussions from time to time that we're uncomfortable with. We might have to own a couple things, but don't walk in secrecy. A man, it says in verse three, meanwhile, when Jesus was in Bethany, a man who previously, he had leprosy. It was Jesus that healed Simon who had leprosy because we know Jesus does that. He's all about healing. He's all about seeing something and, and making it new, bringing life. I love how important it was for Jesus to be relational. He didn't just heal Simon and go, okay, catch you later, I'm on tour, you know, or not catch you later, I might not be back. No, he made an important, an important moment to come back and visit with Simon. He spent time with him. He didn't have any other agenda probably other than just sharing a meal together. He wasn't too busy to spend time with old Simon here. He wanted that quality time with Simon. It's so important to share meals together, to actually have quality time with one another. It generates a unity. It builds relationships. If we're walking with Jesus, we're not called to live on islands and be hermits. We're called to be together, to share time together, to be relational people because that's encouraging and that builds us up. While they were having dinner, a woman came in. It says in our scripture this morning, while he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made of the essence of nard. She broke the jar and poured it perfume over his head. John's account of this incident uh, takes place in John chapter 12, verses one through eight, tells us that this woman was Mary of Bethany, the sister of Mary uh, and well, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. And so you could read up on that a little bit later after church today. But we need to be clear here as well that this incident that is taking place here in Mark chapter 14 and John chapter 12 is different from Luke chapter 7 incident where the account was that as Jesus was eating at a Pharisee's house, yeah, Jesus would eat at Pharisee's house. Why not? There might be an opportunity there. So oftentimes we think, oh, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they were, they, they were these dark people that Jesus didn't want to have anything to do with. That's so wrong. Yeah, he called them out. You whitewashed tomb, you brood vipers. But I tell you what, Jesus wasn't afraid to go to dinner with them at their house on their turf and to be relational with them and to love on them and to minister to them. Just because they were his enemies didn't mean that Jesus was afraid to go where they were or, or he was in a place where it's like, oh, that's just gonna be too dark. They're gonna be doing too many sinful things. Hey, it didn't scare Jesus at all. He went with them. That ought to be a challenge for us as well, to bring the light into the darkness. Don't be stupid about it, but note this too, that the Lord will protect you along the way and bring up conversations. If you have the faith 
If you can take a risk enough to go somewhere that you know is dark, know this, God shows up in those moments. How else will light come into those moments if we can't take a risk every now and then and walk into a place that is not honoring the Lord? Or do we just go, oh, I have nothing to do with that. Never, ever, ever will I set foot in a place like that. Or never, ever, ever will I talk with a person that talks the way that they talk. How are they going to get to know to love Jesus then? Jesus' plan has always been us going into those arenas. He set the tone back to the account here. The, the story we have in Mark chapter 14 is different from what's in Luke's Seven, when a sinful woman came into the house where Jesus was dining with this Pharisee. And she comes in and she, unlike, just like this woman, we have Mary. She brings an alabaster jar of perfume, knelt at Jesus' feet, broken, weeping. Many say that this woman was a prostitute or caught up in adultery. Something pretty heavy. Something pretty dark came to Jesus' feet in tears and in the perfume that she broke over Jesus was wiping them off with her hair. Some of you know this story. She's broken emotionally. She's scarred. No doubt she might have been feeling worthlessness in that moment, shameful, but she came to Jesus anyway. She was at her ultimate rock bottom, but she came to Jesus anyway. This is worship. Because oftentimes when we are in those places, we don't want to come before the Lord. We feel shameful. We feel guilt. Ugh, if I come before him, that's going to take a lot of work. I'm going to have to say no to a lot of different things if I come before Jesus. Nothing was holding this woman back from getting to the feet of Jesus. This is worship bringing what she had. She needed restoration. She needed forgiveness, salvation, peace. She knew to come to Jesus. His love for her in that moment overwhelmed her. Talk about being present. She ran the risk of the reputation that she had in that community. The Pharisees passing judgment on her, wanting her out. Get out of this. this. This is a Pharisee home. Only righteous people can live in here. She broke through that door and she came to worship the Lord. We know what the Bible says in Psalm 147, three, verse three. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Oftentimes this happens, precious people in worship coming before Jesus. That's why we make it such a, a big portion of what we do here because this is where God goes to work on our hearts. Is there other ways to worship the Lord other than praise and, and worship and, and singing? Yes, absolutely. Paul talks about this, that our actions are an act of worship. But there are those that will say, well, this is not my thing, worshiping and singing even though over and over and over again through the Psalms, we see it taking place, don't we? Singing, praising, worshiping. Why? Because it's an expression of your heart. When you can sing, you're exposing your heart. You're exposing your voice. You're taking a risk, so to speak. But that's where God shows up. But sometimes people just go, oh, that's not my thing. I, I'm, I'm not into that in that regard. And you miss what the Lord would have for you in worship. We just got done reading. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages up their wounds. Softens hard hearts. Takes away bad attitudes. Yes, convicts and restores. I would bet that there are hearts here today that need a band-aid that you've been beat up and maybe stepped on. Maybe you've been stabbed in the back and it just hurts. Maybe you've had a, a relationship that tore your heart apart. Maybe you've just been caught up in things that are away from the Lord. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's keeping you from Jesus. 
And when the opportunity to worship comes, you shrink back a little bit. You, you, you tense up maybe a little bit. But God wants to heal your heart. He wants to bandage up your wounds so that there would be healing there, so that growth would come. Here in our text, back to Mark chapter 14, the woman comes with another beautiful alabaster jar. This was a beautiful jar a very, very expensive perfume made from essence of nard. This would have been their family's inheritance. This would have been everything that they had. And she comes in, she broke open the jar, poured it over the head of Jesus. Now, both these occurrences, Mark chapter 14 and in Luke chapter 7, there's the essence of worship. There's an aspect of giving away, giving back to the Lord, pouring out, sacrificing their own thing, their own worth in order to give it to Jesus, giving back to him, not wanting to take from Jesus. Notice on both those stories, it wasn't that like, oh, this is what I need from Jesus. No, it was, hey, I'm bringing this to him. He's done so much for me. He's loving me right where I'm at, regardless of where I might be. I'm giving back to him. This perfume, oh, it's all I have and it, it's everything. And that's what I want to give to Jesus. And that's what he calls us to do. There's certain movements out there in regards to worship in churches that the worship service becomes all about the individual. And what can I get from Jesus? I want to be whipped up into an emotional state. I want this from the Lord. I want that from the Lord. I, 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 I. That's not worship. Worship is Jesus, giving back to Jesus, coming before him and doing whatever you can to honor him in your life. Whether it's through praise and worship here, whether it's you're honoring the Lord, making good decisions in your life, you're honoring him. It's an act of worship. It's an avenue for us to build strength. Whether we're in church, we could be driving down the road and all of a sudden, you know, we're so often we want to hear a podcast or we want to hear this or that. Sometimes maybe, I know for me, the Lord just says, Jimmy, turn off your radio. I want, you, I want some time with you. Can you just pray? Can you just come before me and, and have a, a, a worship session with no music or anything? It's like, oh yeah, I forget. I need to be reminded that I could do that right then and there. And then someone cuts me off and then I'm all over it. Ah, and it takes me out of that moment. <laughs> Just kidding, you red plates. It's all good. We love, we love nothing but love. <laughs> oh, but there is a cost. It's gonna be costly when we worship the Lord. We know that it costs both these ladies this expensive amount of perfume pouring out on Jesus. And that might be something interesting for you, like cost. What, what does that mean for me? It doesn't cost to go to church. It doesn't cost to, to worship the Lord. What would it cost me? Well, it might be your pride. It might, it might be your pride, your sacrifice of praise when you don't feel like worshiping the Lord. I guarantee you, we have people here that come early to set up. We have people in, in this worship band. There are mornings that, that we don't necessarily feel like it, you know, because we're tired and whatnot, and we've been going, going, going. But we know we can honor the Lord with it, so we show up. We just show up, and then the Lord takes it from there. But it might cost us something, like pride, or sacrifice of praise, or it might cost you being too concerned with what others think, that you come and, and you worship the Lord anyway. I tell you what, I think that when we get to heaven, <laughs> we're gonna wish that we worship Jesus a lot more on earth. Because I think it builds something within our hearts. I think it brings us closer to the Lord. And therefore, when we get to heaven, maybe we're gonna experience the Lord in just a greater way, in greater detail, in greater depth, because we learn to worship him here on earth. You know, in the Septuagint, the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, it has the word worship and it's called pronosco. 
pronosco, you can call it. And it actually means to bow or to kiss, to serve. To bow, to kiss, to serve in worship. Bowing down. How many times do we read that in the Psalms? Bowing down, kneeling before the Lord. We serve him as we worship. And to kiss, it's passionate. It ought to be passionate. It ought to be a time where our hearts are engaged in what we are doing. And so we see this taking place. We see this woman worshiping the Lord regardless of what others thought. But there were some others that had some strong feelings about what she was doing. In verse four and five, it says, some at the table were indignant. What does that mean? They were offended. Yeah, the word actually means irate. Who were they? The disciples. What the heck is she doing? The ones who walked with Jesus went right over their head. They were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly, scripture says. Isn't that interesting? The biggest criticism is coming from those that walked with Jesus themselves. Criticism crushes hearts at times, crushes people's momentum. And sometimes we don't even know we're criticizing. We criticize other churches. Well, they don't do things the way that we do them, so they're probably lame. Or, or we come to different people and, and we're, we could be so critical too much of the time. And I think it's a result of lack of worship because when we're worshiping, the Lord softens our heart and brings us to this place where, man, who am I to be critical? So as they were irate over this, and had something to say because what this woman was doing. You know, this isn't a new story. We, we read about in 2 Samuel chapter 6, the same thing that as David danced before the Lord because the ark was coming into the Jerusalem once again, his wife criticized him. And she ended up being barren for um, not being able to, to have children. And um, we know that story. You could read that tonight, 2 Samuel chapter 6. That's a good one. But Jesus' response to the disciples were, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. So she has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. Jesus says, hey, you guys, I'm here. You're not always going to have me. Remember, he has told them at least three times of what's going to go down. That he was going to be arrested. He was going to be tortured. That he was going to be delivered over to death, but he would rise again on the third day. They didn't get it. This woman did. She's preparing him for burial because, yeah, what Jesus was saying, she was picking up what he was throwing down. So, oh, this is all going to go down. This is all going to happen. The disciples were not in that place. He said, you will not always have me. I'm here right now. What is he saying? Oh, I love this. I love this so much. I think essentially he's saying, you guys, be in the moment. I'm here. Be in the moment. Capture it. Be present. I could learn so much from that alone, just to be present before the Lord. I think I've missed a lot of moments to worship. I think I've missed moments to serve others. I think I've missed moments to be kind, to extend myself to someone else, all acts of worship. I want to be present. I want to be present before the Lord so I don't miss those opportunities. That's why Paul says, hey, make the most of every opportunity. You're here with 50 other believers? Wow. Make the most of that. 
worship the Lord and then take well, how cool the stoke that God gave you here at church on a Sunday morning. Take it to your community. Bring it back into your homes. Bring it to your workplace and be the living epistle that the Lord has called you to be. What Jesus says was, don't criticize her. She has done what she could. She brought all she had. She brought her best to Jesus. She brought her best. Do do we bring our best? I'm just throwing that out there. When we have those opportunities, can we be better about bringing our best in worship and not be so concerned to be present in worship? Do you bring your best? Or like the disciples, maybe, maybe you fall on the lines and it's just between you and Lord, you're more critical. Where are the words? The sound is this, the sound is that. There's too much djembe. There's never too much djembe, Mike. We know that to be true. There's this or that, but we could get so critical so easily of our surroundings. I think the best worship times for me and the Lord is one person up there, young person, Guitar is out of tune. They're singing off key, messing up the words. And the Lord's saying, can you worship me anyway? Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm too distracted. I think we're so, we're too easily distracted. Worship prepares our heart for the word. Prepares our, our lives for the battle that we all face, each and every one of us, as we leave this place. Why wouldn't we want to be equipped to go back out there? Worship prepares us. It could be said that you, when you worship, you defeat the enemy right then and there. Right? Like when you, when you lift up the name of the Lord Jesus, when you praise him, the enemy's being taken down in that moment. He's not getting the best of you. It's those moments where we don't come before worship and we're being attacked and we just allow the enemy to have his way with us. No, don't be that person. Go toe to toe with them through worship. Use it as something that could be for you. I'm gonna close with this. As this story concluded, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, whenever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Why? Because she's present, because she took the opportunity to worship the Lord. I wanna read this because I think it ties in. It does, I'm just, this is just coming to me right now. We have the woman in this moment of worship. Then verse 10, Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples went to the leading priest to arrange to de- betray Jesus to them. They were delighted when they heard why he had come and they promised to give him money. So he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. You have the woman Mary, worshiper of Jesus. You have Judas, betrayer of the Lord. When we don't take time to worship Jesus, you're more prone to compromise your faith, to give in to temptation. Don't be a Judas and just miss the opportunity. And then it's easier to miss the next opportunity and then the next opportunity and then the next opportunity. Pretty soon you find yourself with a hard compromising heart like Judas had. So come and be like a Mary. And and don't, don't you, we don't need to go in that direction where our life is full of compromise. Do you find yourself tempted pretty easily throughout the week over different things that pop up? Whether it's on the internet, whether it's with, friends that are doing things that that you know you shouldn't be doing. Take the time to worship and I guarantee you the appetite to sin diminishes as you worship the Lord. So as James says, be humble, be humble. Humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee for you. Come close to God as we worship, that happens. Come close to God and what does the scripture says? God will come close to you. Amen?
Right on. Let's pray. So, Lord, as we come before you right here and now, may we just have a, a moment, Lord Jesus, before you. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those of us that have allowed ourselves to just be a little dry, Lord Jesus, that we would come back in this moment and just allow you to have your way with us. Lord, in this moment, we want to bring our best to you. Whatever that may look like for you, I, I don't know. But for some, maybe it's giving up some things in order to give back to Jesus what he's calling for. And that's our hearts. And learning to be better worshipers. Maybe that's the prayer this morning. As we kind of wind things down here in this moment. Come before Jesus and ask him to make you a better worshiper. Ask him what's in the way. And I guarantee you, he's going to tell you. Ask him what you could bring. What best can you bring to Jesus? I guarantee you he's going to show you. What do you need to say no to in order to say yes completely to Jesus? Let's just have a couple moments here where we're just going to have some acoustic music playing and it's your time to come before the Lord. Forget about who's next to you. Forget about what you're doing this week or doing later today, but be present before the Lord in this moment. And then we'll, we'll lead you through a worship song and then move on. But the Lord calls us to be changed. And in order to do that, we must get rid of ourselves and get over ourselves in one way or the other in order to allow God to truly do that new work in us. So let's just do that right here and right now. Jesus. 
you, Jesus. 
Thank you so much for this morning. I pray for my brothers and sisters now that as we leave this place, Lord God, that we be leaving encouraged, Lord, filled up in order to pour ourselves out for the rest of the week and be used by you in, in maybe a greater way. Lord, teach us what it means to be worshipers of you. Teach us what it means to be present before you. We love you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, Amen, amen. Hey, so we're going to have a, a baptism a little bit later. And if you yourself have never been baptized, or maybe you were as an infant, and uh, you have more of a realization now of what it means, or you're curious about it, please come talk to me, and let's, uh, let's make it happen. It, again, it's not if we want to get baptized. We're just being obedient to the Lord. He tells us to. So uh, if that's you, uh, come talk to me, and we'll, we'll make it happen today. But God bless you. Thank you for being with us.